Kobe. Um, wait. Just like pass it to anyone. Um, Udena. Okay, if Udena doesn't want to unmute, let's pass it to um, Mazur. Hi, everyone. Mazur Wunedi and in the 40s. Oh, um, pass it to Elona. Okay, you know what, we're just gonna go ahead and start. So basically what this meeting is about is activism and youth activism. And even though we are all, some of us are in older age ranges and some of us are more in the early teens, one thing that ranges with all of us is our talents and our abilities to use what we have for the world. And so, that is what this meeting basically is about to not inspire all of us to make a change but this meeting provides a platform for us to be able to make a change and we right now have the opportunity to gather ideas of what we want to see in this in the next governmental elections and through what we come up in this meeting we can see change and we can enact it and then also after this meeting we'll get the opportunity to collaborate with preserve our roots or fight global warming nigeria um and basically just have that space throughout the, this entire year to um, lead local projects and be the first of many discussion spaces we will hold for Nigerian youth. So if you're in this meeting, you have one of the first, you are one of the first people to get the opportunity to be um, ambassadors or youth ambassadors pre for Preserve Our Roots. And yeah, so that's basically what this meeting is about. Um, and we, it's a discussion based, so that's why I wanted to start off with the popcorning. But we're basically going to be talking about what problems we see right now in Nigeria and all together try and work for solutions to that, to some of the problems. So I think one thing we're going to do now is we're going to do a little speed round. I just want everyone to type as many problems as they can into the chat that they know that not only Nigeria, but the entire world faces and I'll call someone to read everything in the chat, but I really want this to be interactive. So if you can just type in as many different problems that you know into the chat. Okay, I'm going to call on, let's see, Moshe Pear, please, can you unmute and read some of the problems that we see right now in the chat? As I said, bad transportation. 
Thank you. Okay, so now that we've done this activity, we obviously see that there are so many things that go wrong, that are going wrong in this world. And there are a lot of things that, I don't know, we can't really figure out simple solutions for. So there's this short presentation that was created, um, that I created, but in partnership with um, the Youth Activist Toolkit, also gotten from the United Nations. And we're just going to look, have a little interactive session, just getting more solid definitions of what organization is, how to lead a movement, just so that we're all equipped real, um, just to know what we have to do to become really, use our talents for good. So I'm gonna share my screen again, I think. Yeah. And then we're just going to go along for this. So, you know, we're gonna make this really like a Zoom class even. So let's get, um, William, can you unmute yourself and just like, from just read what you see organizing as just on the screen, you can see it. Um. So organizing is the process of building power as a group and using this power to create positive change in people's lives. Thank you. And so with this organization, it shows that we are all blessed. Right now we are on a Zoom call. We have access to internet. We are safely in our houses during elections or all around the world. I know Abby's tuning in from the US. So we are blessed with the opportunity to have certain things that a lot of people don't have. So as people with these talents and these blessings, we are and should be enabled to organize other people and lead movements. So we see inequality, we see bad transportation, we see all these things going on, but how do we actually do something about it and organize and using our power to create positive change in other people's lives, essentially. And so like what we've just done, we've identified some problems we see. And right now, what I want everyone to do is pick someone else's what someone else put in the chat and try and figure and say a solution that you think you have to that, like a change you want to see. So for example, Zara put in the chat, bad transportation systems, but it's not just enough to identify a problem going on. We also have to take the extra step and try and see what else do we want to see. Instead of bad transportation, you want to see more efficient roads or better um, and more efficient transportation or cars or cleaner energy buses something like that but I want everyone to let's start with Udena please can you unmute your mic and just pick one thing you see someone else typed in the chat and say like a vision a clear vision of the entire opposite of that Udena Sorry, did you guys just hear what I said? I think I was muted. Okay, great. Okay, anyone can just unmute their mic. Well, let's get, yeah, anyone, if you want, just unmute your mic and pick a problem that was put in the chat and give a clear vision of the entire opposite of it or an idea that you would, a world you would rather see. Okay, I know Ademidu just came in. Um, sorry to just get you off guard, but I know that right now we're talking about 
um, problems that we see in Nigeria and solutions and clear visions of what we would rather see. And some people put in the chat poverty, hunger, corruption, crime and inequality, bad transportation and tribalism. And so if you want to just pick one of those problems that you see and say a vision of something else you would rather have in Nigeria. Like I should say something that I would rather see like, yeah. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, um, unity instead of tribalism. Unity. I want to see everybody coming together. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Um, I'd rather see better job opportunities and um, less bribery and corruption going on in the public sector. Hi, this is William's mom. I, I would rather see um, a country where um, their race and ethnicity and tribe really has nothing to do with who gets opportunities, but at the same time, we acknowledge that there have been these issues in the past of um, marginalization of different groups. So acknowledging that these things have happened in the past and there needs to be some kind of correction, but at the same time, trying to achieve a society that really upholds meritocracy. So a society that really puts capabilities and capacities and abilities beyond where somebody is um, from. Great, thank you. Um, so I think one practice that we've just done is not only, like, I think that's one thing that all of us struggle with is just complaining, that we complain about a problem that we see and then we say it's bad. We say, we just recognize all that is bad about it, but we never try and think about the solutions. And so this call basically is us generating the solutions and then it will be, like I said before, shared to the government. But right now we are blessed with the presence of a, very experienced and also very well-known activist. Her name is Olua Mojo, And I actually got in contact with her over a platform that both of us were on because of COP27. And I've been following her on social media and her work is amazing. And I, I don't know if she's comfortable with it, but I would be honored to also read her bio. Um, I could just say her bio real quick, but I just wanted to make sure that she's here. Um, Olua Sheyi, are you online? Yes, I am. Great, thank you. And if you feel comfortable, you can also put it on your call on your camera just for the short time that you will be speaking. If you're comfortable. I didn't plan for that. I didn't plan for that. Okay, it's fine, don't worry. Um, yeah. but I'll just I'll just read your bio real quick. Olua Shei Mojiko is a 21-year-old environmentalist who is educating the next generation of young leaders about climate change and helping them build the knowledge and skills they need to proffer, to proffer innovative solutions to environmental issues. Through her NGO, You Recycle Initiative Africa, Olua Shei has engaged over 10,200 young people across over 14 states in Nigeria and 11 African countries. In 2022, her initiative won a grant from the government of Canada for their Plastic Wiz Fellowship, a leadership development program for young female undergraduates aimed at tackling marine plastic pollution in universities through a transformative behavioral change campaign. She has received awards and accolades um, for her contributions to protecting nature and advancing its development, including the 2022 Diana Award, being named a National Geographic Young Explorer and being recognized as one of the top 40 teen leaders in the world by the We Are Family Foundation in 2021. She has been featured on media outlets, including CNN, Channels TV, TVC News, and more. And she's a certified nonprofit leadership and management from the Lagos um, Business School. And right now she's studying at the University of Lagos in Nigeria. So that's just a quick bio. And she's just going to give us a little five minute um, just talk about how she came to be an activist, just inspiring all of us and also showing us that no matter how old we are or where we are in the world, that we can still make a difference and positively impact our country. So thank you. I'll hand it over to you. 
Okay, so good evening, everybody. And how are we doing today? So can we just signify with an emoji? How, how are you feeling today? In the chat box. How are we feeling today? Can you signify in the chat box with an emoji? Your favorite emoji or any emoji of your choice? Okay, awesome. We have a smiley face. We have good. Okay, that sounds great. All right. So personally, I'm feeling very jittery. I just came back from like, okay, I think a couple of hours ago, three hours ago, I came back from like my first election and wow. I'm just happy that it was it was fairly smooth at my polling unit, and I'm just really hoping that everything is going to be really fair and somewhat somewhat fair and good across the country. So over to what we are here for today. Um, thank you so much, Amara, for this opportunity to speak with young people that are interested in climate activism, right? And um, I'm really looking forward to working very closely with you because I have, I have some plans coming up soon and it's really nice to collaborate with you in that regard. Well, back to the matter at hand today. Um, my name is Oluwa Shein Moejo and over the last five years, I've been working on tackling plastic pollution and climate change in Nigeria through two major or three major frameworks. The first is awareness and behavioral change, right? The second one is capacity building and the third one is innovation, right? How can we convert waste to value? So my story started when I was 16. I was at, I think, SS2. Yeah, SS2 in Queens College, yeah, Lagos. I was very shy. I was very, I was still trying to come out of my shell then. And it was a really different thing for me to do, right? But I felt called to like do this because that year I, I took part in a particular essay contest that showed me how a lot of people did not have access to clean water. And, and I also got to learn about the SDGs and how anybody anywhere could really do something to contribute to solving this problem, right? So I was like, okay, how can, what can I do in my school? And one thing less than another, I revived the club at my school. We got on some very exciting projects from having, um, hosting, a, hosting an inter-class recycling challenge to, um, raising awareness on the better use of toilets, the need for clean water and sanitation to World Environmental Day celebrations. And then again, I was eventually, towards, towards leaving my secondary school and graduating, I was able to win a small grant of $100 to start my nonprofit called Jury Recycle Initiative Africa, which is now registered, right? So um, when I won the mini grant of $100, that was about 36,000 Naira. In, 20, in 2018, yeah. It was really small. Like each time I spoke to someone, I was like, oh, I want a hundred dollar grant. I'll be able to start a nonprofit of my own or NGO of my own. And I'm so excited. And I was, I was always met with this kind of stare, like what can hundred dollars really do? Like what can that really do? But how about I tell you that ever since then, it's been a really beautiful journey. It has not been the smoothest of journeys, but it has been a really promising journey. Like today we've won grants from, one grant of, of over $60,000 from from um, reputable organizations like the government of Canada, National Geographic Society, but to mention a few, right? So in summary, in summary, I'm here to share very briefly what inspired me, why I keep going, and how, how anyone can get started in this space, right? So the first thing I would say is your why, right? Why? Why are you interested in climate change? Why are you interested in tackling plastic pollution? Why are you interested in taking change? And it's not just climate change, but like generally, why do you want to contribute to social change, right? Because this helps you to stay grounded. This helps you to stay grounded even on difficult days. As I said, it, is not, it has not been a walk in the park. Launching projects while at school, studying law has been something else. That's been really, really something else. And I don't want to get into details, but in summary, my why has kept me steadfast. And what is my why, you may ask. So in communities like Akodo here in Bariga, right? Close to where I stay at, I stay in Yaba, but Bariga is like community a little bit after Yaba, right? So in communities like Yaba, especially the larger community, they are facing environmental injustice caused by marine plastic pollution, right? So what does that mean? On the land here, we throw our trash into the 
gutters, which are, we dump our trash into the canals irresponsibly, and then they have to face the repercussions of our negligence, right? They have to face the effects of our of our carelessness, right? And this, this happens over and over again, and it keeps on piling and piling on their shorelines, and this affects their health, affects their livelihood. So what does that mean? Communities like Akodo, or rather communities like Ilaje, rather Ilaje Bariga, and also Akodo, Akodo is in um, Ibejuleki. These communities, they rely on fishing. This is their livelihood. They have been born fishermen, fisherwomen. They live on fishing. They go to school on fishing. Their children go to school on fishing. Everything's about fishing for them. But however, plastic is making it difficult for them to fish as much as they, as they used to previously, right? And so this eventually affects them indirectly, affects their quality of life. So the more we have plastics coming in, in very drastic amounts of rates, the more it's affecting their quality of life and causing poverty and hunger. But to mention a few, right? So in summary, this is one particular issue, environmental injustice, one reason why I'm doing the work I'm doing, right? Secondly, the knowledge gap. A lot of young people in Nigeria are not concerned about the environment, right? We have to work extra to get people concerned because there are a lot of issues in Nigeria. Yes, they are equally important, but we cannot underestimate the fact that nature is inherently like us. We are actually nature because it goes down to the very core. Close your eyes and imagine going a day in your life without nature. Like just try thinking about a world without nature. It is, it is absolutely impossible, right? So we have to understand that we are nature. The more we put things into nature, the more we put things into ourselves. Back to the environmental injustice issue, as we have plastic growing in, in, um, in large forms into those communities, getting into those communities, also getting into the ocean through my, microplastics breaking down, they end up in fishes that we eat, causing, causing very concerning diseases that sometimes involve cancer, right? So in some ways, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, it's a cycle, right? Plastic pollutes at every stage of its cycle. And it's, only, and it's only important that we do something about this by either reducing it, recycling, or reusing it. That's, the, that's just the starting point, right? How can we at least reduce our plastic footprint? So how can we even at least stop littering, stop littering, tell our friends to stop littering? If we all decide to stop littering in Nigeria, that would be radically something impactful, right? That would, that would change so much. It would, it would change so much. So, and it all boils down to one thing, both the knowledge gap and lack of interest and environmental injustice, it all boils down to one thing, our minds. Now here in Nigeria, we never grew up like per se in, in nature. We've also, we've always seen nature as different from us. Like we don't see nature as one with us. And we don't even, most times our first interaction with nature is not so pleasing. So we grew up not really liking nature and seeing nature as different. So that's why we have situations where people have the poor mindset towards nature. Like when you call to tell them, oh, take action for the environment. How does it concern me? That's what, that's what you get as a response. Or everybody is doing it. But what if everybody said everybody's doing it and dumped a plastic bottle in a canal? And we have 1 million people doing that. Imagine how much havoc that would cause. So now moving forward, what is the way forward? Over the years, I have been able to, I've been able to explore different methodologies and different, let me, try, let me try to slow down my terms. I've been able to ex, uh, uh, explore different ways of launching projects, right, in communities, especially schools, because I realized that in the recycling sector, sustainability sector, environmental sector, a lot of focus was not really going towards schools. More so, a lot of focus wasn't going to schools outside Lagos. We only had people doing a, lot, doing a lot of work just in Lagos. Sadly, Lagos is only one of 36 states in Nigeria. So I was, I was, despite being very young, I'm currently 21 now, and I started at 16, I felt um, motivated to think out, outside Lagos, to build frameworks outside Lagos, to build projects outside Lagos. Today, we have our projects done across 14 states. I have never stepped my foot in some of those states, but we have our systems and structures working for us in those states. We've had young people that have also grown through our project, they've won grants, they've, they've earned opportunities, they've earned jobs. It, is, it gives me so much joy, right? Because I'm still young and I'm already doing these things. And I'm not just doing these things, I'm also empowering people to do these things also for young people in their community. So it's a cycle, right? So in summary, what are these things that I have leveraged? I mentioned it briefly before, environmental education and awareness, capacity building and innovation, right? So the question is, how can we get more people informed and armed with the right tools, skills, and knowledge to take action. How can we make them problem solvers for the planet? That's the first 
point. Second point then would be, how can we innovate our way out of this problem? How can we explore where we can transform, transform waste to value? And another point would then be, how can we also proactively solve this problem? Because if you notice, something like plastic pollution is being, a lot of people are focusing on cleanups and recycling. Yes, that is very fine, but that should not be exclusively the only solution. We need to also proactively solve this problem. And that is one of the reasons why we launched PlasticWise. PlasticWise is focused on how, seeing how we can build the largest campus movement ever, like literally probably in history, probably in Nigeria, and most very soon in Africa, focus on tackling plastic pollution. We see the energy that the youth bring when they become very passionate about an issue. And we want to leverage creativity to see how we can spike awareness. We want to leverage capacity building to see how we can spike awareness and, and, and passion to protect the environment. So in summary, how can anybody take action? How can anybody take action? It can start with something as simple as asking yourself some questions. Okay, so what's one thing I'm really concerned about? What's one little thing, one, one mantra I used to live by and I still live by is little actions count. I tell people, if you need any proof in any way, any proof, any way that consistently taking little actions, little positive actions can make a big deal eventually, please look at my life because I started as a 16 year old, I was probably shy, I couldn't even talk, I couldn't talk in public properly. I was very shy, like I can't even explain to someone that has spoken in, spoken in various places someone has inspired a very broad movement right and i'm not saying all this to be to sound like i have arrived because honestly the gap is still very wide and i'm so motivated to stick to, to keep on ideating right so in summary start to asking yourself what then why then how and beautifully i I have this article that, because I, I write for a particular magazine, it's called Awake Magazine, it's a global magazine, right, for climate activists, young climate activists and climate leaders. Anything you could probably ask, have as questions about climate change, you would probably find useful resources, games, stories, a lot on our magazines. We've had four editions now, and excitingly, I'll be receiving the first copies um, of some of the editions here in Lagos, Nigeria, or rather here in Africa for the very first time, right? And I would, I'm also thinking of hosting a very small gathering with young people, right, to like share these copies, to reflect on it. It's going to be a paint and sip and plant by the beach very soon, most likely during Earth Day. And I'm looking forward to like inviting some people in this um, space to come and just spend time here. But in the meantime, in summary, we have this Awake magazine. It's available both online and and offline, right? And in this magazine, a particular article I wrote was called Kickstarting, Kickstarting an Environmental Community Project. So in that particular article, I give you like practical steps that have worked for me, that have worked for other activists on how you can start an environmental community project the right way, right? So I walked this very stressful part so that you don't have to walk through that stressful part. So I'm going to share the link to the, the direct link to the magazine here. It's, it's available for free online, right? Um, and then I'm going to try and see if I can get this direct link to that article, right? So I hope that that, that will be very helpful for you to, to see how you can begin to take action. And then secondly, I will speak with Amara about seeing how we can like invite some people from this network for the upcoming um, launch of the OWIC magazines here in Africa. So, with that being said, I exceeded my five minutes um, cap, but I hope that out of all I've said, you've got something very helpful in your journey as a climate activist. Thank you so much, Luwaki. I know that you have to run off. I know you're super busy, but I am also glad that you went out and you got your PVC and you went to go and vote. And hopefully our votes also make a difference. But thank you so much for everything you've shared and for stating that we have to find out our how and our why and how we're going to achieve that. And I am very privileged to have had you on this call and just sharing your story as being a climate activist. So if you guys um, can just go to her magazine and obviously I will let you know um, I'll talk to you after about some people you can connect with after some probably budding activists in this call if they want to. But thank you so much um, for your time. And if you, I know that you have to roll off, but does anyone have any questions for her about her story, about how she got to where she is today or about the future of her organization, New Recycle? Um, if anyone wants to mute and has, ask her a question. space. Thank you.
If not, I do have one question. Um, my question, um, Shay, kind of more relates to your collaboration um, and mentors, but also to the future you see you recycle going. How do you see you recycle scaling and reaching more states? I know that you said you've reached over 11 states in Nigeria, but how I know that you're still young. Are you imagining that you can um, reach to those like more um, corners of Nigeria? And what are some, I think my second question is more relating to your hiccups. Like what are some struggles that you had faced and how did you overcome any of those struggles as a young climate activist? Okay, that sounds like really interesting questions. Okay, so the first thing, future, what's the future for you recycle? So we want to build a legacy of young leaders passionate about solving environmental issues, right? And one way we're doing that especially is through our professional fellowship programs for young people. So through these fellowship programs, we offer tailored guidance, training, grants, mini grants, and um, sometimes mentorship to support them in building solutions in their communities, right? And um, in this fellowship, we're planning, we've had, we had, a, we had the first um, cohort last two years, 2021, that we deployed across six states for teenagers, like six states, we, we worked with some young people between the ages of 16 to 25 as our fellows who then went on to empower thousands of teenagers, right, across these six to seven states. And that was like the very first time we test run that project across um, different states. And the second time we have, we currently have our plastic wise projects deployed across another six states, but this time we reached out to more young people and our focus is especially on universities. So in summary, I'm not try to stress it too long, but in summary, to answer your question, uh, the future of your recycle is capacity building, right? So I know, honestly, what I shared to you in that article, for instance, it took me years mm -hmm. to, to find this, to find this formula of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. Because I had to feel, I had to learn, I had to feel, I had to learn, I had to, I had to look up to people, I had to, it was really difficult. But then through an already proven principle, we want to already make it easy for people that want to take action, that are interested in taking action, or that are not even be interested in taking action, right? To start something in that community or to contribute to something in that community. So in some way, the future of of um, you recycle is we're going to pitch our tent very heavily on capacity building and we're going to leverage the power of young people to scale our work across Nigeria through creativity yeah, and faith. Then secondly, to answer your second question, what problems have I faced? And, and I still face some problems. So the first will be time. Time has been one thing super hard to figure out, right? So I have not been able to successfully balance my school responsibilities and my my um my professional responsibilities but in some way i've been able to learn how to prioritize so my 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 hack towards that is prioritizing right prioritizing a lot and learning learning how to ask for help so i can't do everything myself so when i have too much on my plates i should definitely feel happy to like i should not feel like um it's terrible to ask for help i should actually ask for help as much as i can because that's the only way tangible progress can be made sometimes. Then, um, secondly, um, age. Age has been a barrier, right? Because currently my organization is transitioning from a small nonprofit to like a more national, like it's becoming, it's growing really fast. And last year I had, I had a lot of experiences that really took me out of my comfort zone. So, I had to even go and take a course then in LBS because I needed more, more knowledge. So age has been a barrier, right? However, true knowledge and skills and capacity building, I've been able to like navigate that and I'm still navig navigating that. The second thing I've faced also is gender bias. So being a young female leader, I never, I never used to think this way that it would be, that would be a problem for me. But as, as my organization is transitioning more and more, I'm now working with more professional people and they are also like very old men and and they also sometimes try to like want to bring down my ideas or bring down my like thoughts or feel that make me feel oh I'm not good enough you understand I have to like try extra hard to convince them to do things that we're having them on board thing for but in summary in summary I'm I'm also trying to see how I can learn people management better because not everybody would be 
will be on your like when you have your team you can't expect everybody to like support your ideas every single time so you can't you shouldn't also see them as like oh enemies in quotes you should rather see how you can navigate those barriers to to like work better with people right so right now in terms of gender bias i try to see how i can call out the problem and how i point i tell them point blank that oh i'm not calling gender bias but i'm maybe like um, for instance, you are deflecting, and I'm not happy that you're deflecting. Can we solve the problem at hand? Do you understand? Or I tell them, I try to push, I try to like take some space out so it's not too heated up. Or I try to like, um, right now I'm just trying to see how I can build my people management skills because I'm understanding that as my organization is growing, I have to also grow in managing people because people are essentially super important. Like when you get to a point, see that funding is not actually per se a particular problem. It's actually about getting the right people with the right attitude, the right people with the right attitude and the right, the right skill set. So right now, that is one thing I'm trying to use to solve that. So, um, and generally, um, I'm just really trusting God and praying a lot about a lot of things because that's one thing I'm having faith that um, I'm going to be in this space for a very long time. So in summary, I mentioned time, age, gender bias in time i learned how i've learned how to prioritize in age i'm learning how to build my capacity and then gender bias i'm learning how to improve my people management skills so that i learn how to like interact with difficult people okay so that's that's the summary of the two of challenges i faced in my journey so far thank you so much for your time yeah. really appreciate it yeah thank you so much amara you're doing great you're doing so much great work and i'm looking forward to how everything evolves. Of course. I'll reach out to you after. Bye. Right. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Um, and if you guys can, I shared a link in the chat, but I'll copy and paste it again. It's for a collaboration board because we are coming to a close on the meeting very soon. But one of the core things that I want everyone to take away from this, and also from what Oluwashi shared, is that it's not enough to just say that there are problems. You have to create a vision of what you want to see after the problem. And that's the one thing I want you to remember is the solution. Using your talents, your skills, the um, blessings that you have in your life to be able to be on Zoom, have ACB in your house, using these blessings to positively change the problems that you see. And so you have to declare your problem, but also figure out the solutions. So if you just follow the link, I've sent it in again, and it's a collaboration board where I um, typed in all um, the problems that you guys put in the chat and that you guys identified as some of the problems that Nigeria faces and created a space. So I want everyone to just follow the link and just so you guys don't have to unmute, just type in any tangible solution you think. For example, I put the transportation, I put inequality, tribalism, crime, poverty, hunger, and corruption, because those are the seven that we identified, and then just seeing um, the solutions that we can have with them. So I'll give you guys a second to follow the link. I'm also trying to figure out the website, so <laughs> sorry if that's... And then also, while we're all trying to get on the link, like, can you guys see the link in the chat? I can see the link, but it's showing an error when I click on it. Okay, wait, I'm gonna send a link again. Let's see. Okay, I'll send it in again. And then while we're all trying to go on the link, um, I also want to just let you guys know that there is now an opening for um, climate ambassadors and um, people to become members of the Preserve Our Roots and Fight Global Warming Nigeria, which if you don't know is the organizing organizer of this um, little Zoom meeting. And to become that, it's just here, I'll, I'll put the link in the chat, but it, when you become a member of Preserve Our Roots, we meet once or twice a month and we just have local projects. We'll have beach cleanups, tree planting initiatives, or just Zoom calls, maybe all collaborates to make an informational video, but it's basically you allocating your time to positively impact the people around you. And it's through this movement and it can kickstart and also support you as you try and figure out how you are going to positively, 
positively impact your world. And so it's like not only an incubation hub for young activists, but it's also you being connected to the activism space and also being able to, like people go volunteer over Christmas and all of this, this is your way of making a change. And so I'm gonna put in, it's an application form, so you do have to apply, but this is one of, also one of the benefits of this meeting is also being able to connect with our guest speaker, um, I don't know if you followed her, but I would be able to relay you guys' information to her if if needed. But I'll put the link for signups in the chat just so that if you guys also want to just apply or just even just try it out for a day or two weeks or just if you guys know some other people who would be very interested in it, you can also send it to them and become a member of Preserve Our Roots. And then I'll put the Instagram account so that you guys can also follow that while people are going on the collaboration space. So I put three links in the chat. The first one is for the whiteboard. The second one is for the um, application form and the third one is for the Instagram account. But we are wrapping up meeting soon. So just being able to notice the problems and then have solutions so that we're all leaving this call with a little bit more motivation to try and figure out how to like make a change in our environment. Um, have you guys been able to go on the whiteboard? If not, then I just have to use Zoom. Has everyone been able to access the whiteboard? Yep, I can see it now. Okay, great, thank you. Hmm. Here, I'll also try Zoom. Let me change what I'm sharing. Okay, so let's just do um, a little activity real quick while I'm trying to share the board. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, I can see. You. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, okay. Great. So sorry for the typo there. I don't know what happened. Um, but to end the meeting, we're going to just all pick. I put seven problems up. I'm going to create a new sticky notes. We have seven problems up on the screen of things that Nigeria is right now dealing with, problems that we see, problems that we see in our environment and in our intermediate communities, and just figuring out a tangible solution for each of them. Transportation, we have inequality, and we have tribalism. So you guys get to choose. Either we go into breakout rooms, and since there are 16 of us on this call, since the either go into breakout rooms and you and your partner come up with a two minute, one minute presentation about what your problem is and a solution. Five, like two, three minutes max in the breakout room. So it's a really quick, fun activity or everyone just um, does it on their own. And then you each have to speak for like one minute about the problem you chose and a quick solution. So it's up to you. Either we do breakout rooms or we do, um, I think if we do breakout rooms, I'll do probably bigger groups. Let's see. Okay, I got some private messages that said we should do breakout rooms. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I hope everyone is, the person you go into your breakout room, I hope you guys talk and it's not uncomfortable for you guys because we are all here to learn, to be know how we can um, interact with one another and become activists ourselves. So I'm going to assign you guys breakout rooms. Let's see. Okay. Does everyone know what they're supposed to do? Hi, sorry, can you try to, so basically are we supposed to pick a topic and then talk about how we can solve it? Like, is it a topic that's already on the screen right now? Um, it actually doesn't have to be a problem that you see on the screen right now. In the beginning of the meeting, what we did was a little activity where people just 
um, identified some problems that they see in Nigeria. And oh, okay. We talked about different things that could like what they would rather see instead. And so what instead of just saying what we see and identifying the problems and what we would rather see, we're actually thinking about solutions. So the breakout room is you go and you um, talk with the people in your team, two minute presentation about what your problem is and your solution and what will come out of that solution. So I'm going to assign the rooms now and I'm going to close them in three minutes. But please interact with the people in your team and I'll be going into the breakout rooms just to see that you guys are collaborating. But I guess the two, three minute timer starts now. Hi everyone. Hello. You guys just accept your... Hey, um, Omotala and William. Question, Omar. Um, so, um, in our discussions, um, will we be like talking about one specific problem? Yeah. So, just identify. Um, you guys can decide one problem that you guys would want to present. Maybe if you want to do a quick presentation, or if you want to do a quick PowerPoint, it's up to you but figuring out what the problem is and the solutions that you guys are proposing. So basically this is like a prop proposition. If you guys were like in a elevator with a president for one minute, how would you propose your solution? And so you guys can tag team it and like present it to the group when we're all back in. Does that kind of make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll see you guys back in the main room in two. Okay. Mm. Economic, then. Well, for this to be less economic and uh, gender inequality in the first place, we need more jobs. Uh, gender inequality. I mean, I guess. Oh, so, uh, I guess I qualify. That's good. That's good. Proud of you. Well done. Well done to all of you guys <laughs> doing great things. Yeah, I see there's also Tio Dada here. Tio, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, I'm here with um, Enoch, and he's a robotics wow, engineer yeah. that's doing great work. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hello. Uh, meet you. How's the collaboration you're all, going in this room? You're, all, you're also a robotic engineer? Uh, no. Oh, okay, okay. I was, I was quite shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having a little intro session, I believe. Let's see. Little... Amara, well done for putting this together. So, so proud of you. Thank I'm sure you. you know that already. Thank you. Okay. And not can see you. You can go ahead and 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 share share that. Yeah, you um, guys propose the so problems, and then you're going to propose the solutions in the main group in like two minutes. And you can choose anything that you see, but you have to figure out a tangible solution so that it isn't you just complaining. Um, and then we'll be mm. back soon. So good luck with you with that um activity, you guys. Ah, thank you, thank you. Oh, a tangible solution.
Let me think. What could I say? Uh, what could we present as a tangible solution? Besides just saying opening up soup kitchens, or opening up more community efforts. Well, do you mean like, because the tangible solution to stop crime or for how to treat the offenders? Mm, I could say, I would say stop it. Stop is kind of a heavy word. Let's say reduce crime. Okay. But yeah, I would say stop because, again, just to reiterate, when it Testing someone like, or something like that is just treating the symptoms to the issue, if that makes sense. It's not actually treating the cause. Because they think that they're the only... Because I went, I had a... You guys, you guys may take me out. It's like a day intro that they do. Anyway, take me out. So basically, you get uh, lights, and if the, the guy has to give a pitch, and then if the... How's okay. it going here? Oh, it's, it's going well. Going good? Okay. We're going to have like one more minute. I know that some other breakout rooms are very heated. They're like <laughs> having a debate. But if you guys have your presentation down, maybe just like getting to know the other people in the room or maybe figuring out another solution or something to challenge like why your solution might not even be working. Um, most of all, thanks for joining the call, by the way. But I'm gonna close the breaker room in a minute or so, so you guys can just be chilling. Yeah. We we'll join mm -hmm. groups and pods. So I think that's something you could you could you could profile the solution, and you could build on it. Hmm. Hmm. So just to expand as well, when you're saying that crime watch club. Would that also include like a, you could say a neighborhood watch as well? Not necessarily. It's just a catchy name. I think you could always change it if you <laughs> if you wish. But you know, it's it could just be something exciting for you know for 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 young stars or whatever you think could could be a catchy name. But that was just the name I thought of. But again, the. Mm. On the on the effects of, of 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 crimes and and you can build on from there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Actually, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea, and I don't know how possible this might be. Well, currently, but we could even invite. Uh. Ooh, okay. We could even invite. Um. You could say recovered. Or yeah, recovered cons or recovered ex convicts or ex uh, criminals to come and talk about their experience as well. That's brilliant. There's a lot of things you could do. A lot of mm. things like that. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. How about you, Tio? I think we have ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, I'm not sure I can say now because the time is up. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for collaborating, getting to know the people in your group, but also talking about the problems and identifying the things that we are dealing with and talking about how we want to see change, but also thinking about the solutions and how we have a role in that. Um, and so I know that there were three really active breakout rooms and two that were struggling, really hitting the ice. But if... Um, you guys can unmute yourselves. Um, I think we'll start from breakout one to breakout two to breakout three and then propose your solutions. And then feel free when you're done to challenge them. I think challenging, leaving people with an idea to think about how can we make this better? How can we improve? It's always good to challenge, but we're going to get, let's start off with, does anyone want to volunteer? Or I'll just like pick someone to start. I guess you can pick. Okay, okay. You know what, William, thank you for um, volunteering. We'll start with your goof if you guys want to just propose the problem that you recognized and then a solution. Listing down solutions for, well, listing down solutions for um, 
um, transportation problems. So, so um, about that. So firstly, our first point is that um, the first problem that we pointed out was that um, the government um, of Nigeria hasn't been investing that much money into the transportation sector. And um, this money needs to be used to like maintain like safe for the roads, um, give, given that you see how um, bad the roads are. But the thing is, the government has the money. The government has the money to do this. Second point is that um, most, some of the people that are driving on the road do not have, they, they are lacking a little bit of training. So this, uh, this usually leads to like more accidents. Um, so the, we, we can stop this by, um, by making less corrupt um, like driving schools. So it's basically not just like pay to win, um, paying so that you can get like a fake driving license, then drive badly on the road just to cause an accident. Uh, yeah, those are our points. Those are our main points that we're focusing on. Yes. Um. Also, I was in that group as well. My name is Mosula. Another point is that the 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 um, people who work on roads, people like road um. What do you call them? Traffic conductors. They are not well trained to do their job. Because it's very obvious. I remember one time when I was driving, the traffic conductor was literally cursing at my driver for driving correctly because he didn't understand. understand the meaning of a u-turn he didn't realize like you u-turn in that specific order then he was like yelling at him do all these things so like first of education of them along with that um with um to expand on the allocation of, of the money right they don't know how to um how do i say they don't know how to um repair roads well because they actually do create the roads we have right Zara. Okay, they actually do create the roads we have, right? But the roads are not well maintained. Like there are many potholes, many um things on the road. They're not clean. They're all this and that, and they cause traffic. And they cause cars to like run over them and tires to bust. That's another point. Another point is that like the the um expressway we have is not wide enough and it's not big enough for the amount of people who live in Lagos. I remember I used to live in Chicago, right? Chicago expressways, like highways, they used to be like eight lanes long. They used to be long. Thick, how all these different ways it was it was a very it was a very um what's it called it systematic it was a very systematical way of driving right but we don't have that our, our our roads are too small they're too thin and they're not organized so that's and also we don't have any signs we don't have any driving signs road signs which are very important we don't have speed limits we don't have um, stop signs we don't have u turn signs like there's no communication like in Nigeria it's more like you should just know it you should just know how to drive just know this. No, there should be signs that teach people how to drive because well, just knowing things makes people drive wrong and makes people confused on how to drive. I remember, like, I remember there was this um, one way, there was this one way road, right? I didn't know it was one way. My dad's driver just ran through the other way and there was no sign, there was nothing. We almost collided with the car because of that. So they didn't tell us, there have to be signs, there have to be ways that we should know all these things. Um, yeah, I think that's basically all I can think of. Just transportation, money, bad roads. Oh, and also we need we need train stations. We need train stations. We need public public um transportation to be better and better utilized, especially for the um especially for the environment. Cause like we have a horrible environment here, carbon monoxide around. We need train stations that actually use blue trains take you from Lekki to um from Lekki to Victoria Island, all these things that actually help transportation get better and everything. We can have go from place to place very quickly. Because transportation is a very key um component in like going from job to job, doing this and that. Like some people can't even work in certain places because they can't get transportation to go there. But it's a very important thing to bridge inequality as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amosala and um William for that presentation. I don't know if you can see the screen, but we've been typing that up and Take everything to heart. Uh, I'm so sorry because I literally have to go. But I, can I just add one thing to the transportation? Because I think I was in breakout one. Uh, I think we should have. I think because the police are so corrupt, which is I don't think we have that much control over. But I think we should have uh, alcohol test strips on the drivers on the truck drivers because a lot of them are very are very uh, drunk when they drive, and then a lot of people enter accidents i think we should get speed limit guns like the not guns the testers that show the speed limit of people when they pass 
the we should limit where trucks can go because like even if there are barricades on the road where a truck can go under they still go under it and then damage it so i just think we should get the alcohol test strips which is very important we need to get the alcohol test strips we need to get the speed limit and we need to also put them into proper driving schools because a lot of them are just people that just learn to drive on the road and then because they can drive just give them a job thank you i have to go but it was nice seeing you guys again amara i hope i see you again sometime in the future love you guys Bye. thank you Great. So that was all on transportation. Um, does anyone want to challenge some of these solutions? Because I personally think that the alcohol testing, speed limit testing, they're all good ideas, but it's just how we enforce them because we do it for two weeks and we know that it's not really going to be kept up with. But if we do have strict rule in these next four years, very military military um, formed of rules, it would definitely happen. But thank you guys so much. Does anyone, um, a representative of, I don't know if that was group two, wants to speak on their problem and their solution? Maybe we can run by it fast so we can end soon. Um, but this, I think, was that, I don't know if it was Enox group, was that group two or? Um... Uh, I believe we were group three. three okay, I we group so I think Zara, you were in group two, right? Uh, I was group one. Okay, so okay, Kobe, were you group two? Well, actually, Amaro, like, um, we okay. went two, but he chose us to go first. Oh, my bad. Okay, the next group can just go, whoever it is. Uh, okay, I guess I'll start with group three. So, we were discussing crime crime and how to either limit, reduce, or stop. So the ideas we were just throwing out there was, one, we're thinking of forming a crime watch, you could say, committee, if you could call it that. So essentially, we would have like a group of people who'd go from school to school, discussing about the repercussions and the consequences of this type of life that they're going down. And we're also talking about how, because the most, the people who are most susceptible to influ these bad influences are mainly the youth, you know, younger generations, teenagers, who have just been going through a lot in life and they feel like this is their, how do I put it, this is their way out, or if this is their way in to fit in, depending on how they view it. So we are thinking of also inviting like ex-cons, you know, ex-convict, revamp their life, what led them down that path as, as like a warning to the next generation. So uh, yeah, that was our main discussion. That was our main discussion. Thank um, you. I do agree that education is definitely a very important part of reducing crime, especially in low-income schools, just teaching them about how there's more to it, there's more opportunities to life. I definitely agree. And that is something like we have committees for everything in Nigeria. We have NAFTA. We we have like everything. We can form a coalition for that. Thank you. And I think we have the last group. Does the last group want to share? Or was that the last group? Uh, I was in the group of Kobe and we talked about, so I mean, we talked about transportation, but we also talked about inequality. I mean, we didn't, we mostly talked about, we didn't come up with like exact solutions, but I mean, inequality is like a really hard one to solve. I mean, I don't think it can really be solved at the end of the day, but like for at least gender inequality, like those types of things start in the room, but obviously it can't be solved in the room because you can't obviously enforce how someone should teach, should teach their own kids. But I think it can be like tackled in school. So certain types of talks, or books on the curriculum I should read, and like just challenging like individual people's thoughts. But people who go to co-ed schools, it's really important to like raise how the next generation thinks. And then for economic inequality, I mean, we decided like it mostly lays in the hands of politicians. So obviously, it's very important to elect correct politicians who actually want to do something. But even then, the correct politicians are so susceptible to corruption; they all take part in corruption at the end of the day. So it's just. Like it's a gamble at the end of the day. Can't really solve economic inequality, but obviously one of the biggest problems is unemployment. And 
yeah, to just create more jobs and help solve economic inequality in the long run. So yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so I think that those were the three groups and I think a lot of great ideas were shared and hopefully you guys understand now more of just not just the identification, but also thinking through the solutions. And it is harder, but we just have to recognize the blessings that we have, the skills that we have. So just to close off, I think we're gonna just, if everyone in the, in the chat can type in what they want to see, as the youth of this country in the next season of the, our, the next four years of our government, what changed? Like if you look back um, in four years time and look back at now, just knowing that, oh, this has improved, like being able to see the change. So if you can just type in the chat, I, I'm going to go first and type that I think I want better education for like public schools, the better public school education. Everyone can just type in the chat things that they would rather want to see because this is the most important thing. And then you guys will leave this call thinking about how you have a role to play in the solution. That you guys are the solutions, basically. Everyone can type one thing and then we'll close out. <laughs> and instead, instead of just typing in one word, I'm gonna challenge you guys to actually like say, and so instead of like electricity or transportation, those are like, groups of things so maybe like something tangible like cleaner roads or gardens things like that thank you for everyone typing in the chat um i'm gonna ask um Let's see, Kobe, please unmute and read what people put in the chat just so that we can all hear it for ourselves. Electricity, better public school education, transportation, better security. And I also see better leadership that we can be proud of, leadership affects every part of the country yeah yes almost all that uh better roads better security more stable electricity to reduce your reliance on generators thank you for the elaboration yeah okay so this is awesome and thank you guys so much for just like trying to be present in this meeting um and all of that today is election day and not only is the voting the part of like the solution or our parts but having these conversations and coming to these discussion spaces to see how we really can make a difference and so I challenge all of you guys today to when you're going through today notifying the problems but also trying to find out how you can help um, and just to close it off the last person um need to put more people being educated through remote means like online and because it's cheaper than traditional means. Yes, thank you so much for this meeting. Before we end, I'm going to put in the link one more time for signing up for Five Global Warming Nigeria, just the Google form. If you want to be a volunteer, we have like monthly um, like beach cleanups, uh, different local projects, all of that. So I'm just gonna put it in the chat um, for the sign up and put in my the Instagram. Okay, no, that was the wrong link. And then we'll be able to close off. Thank you guys so much for coming. So just make sure that you follow the link or send it. Um, and have a great rest of your evening, you guys. Bye. Thank you, Mara. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>